how to use JSON with padding uh, with jQuery and Node.js. So let's get started. Uh, basically, I have set up a little uh, HTTP uh, file server, uh, which uh, you may have seen in my previous webcast as well. And I'm going to get it started. And um, let me just comment out some code before I start showing that because I want to go over the code and tell you how it is done. So let's just comment that code. And so I'm starting the HTTP server here. And if I click on it, it basically shows some tests and then it shows a button and uh, the output result is going to be shown here in the sample. And uh, what uh, the button does is it will call this function and I'm going to show you the code of this function called Ajax. It's fairly straightforward. It's using the Ajax uh, 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 jQuery promises. And uh, basically to be able to do JSON padding, what you have to do in the URL, you have to append this thing if you want to use the standard jQuery system of doing this. So uh, slash JSON P question mark callback equal to question mark. And this will allow you to be able to send a request uh, from your client browser uh, and request the server to be a JSON with P or JSON padding request. And the reason why you want to be uh, doing the JSON padding request is to be able to get over the cross domain restrictions. Uh, so you can uh, call things uh, because scripts do not have the same restrictions. And especially if you have cooperating uh, servers, then this would be comes in very handy. And so let me just show you uh, what uh, this is going to do. And let's say uh, uh, I'm going to start uh, the Express server. And I will also show you what it is doing. So I'm going to start the Express server. As you can see, the Express server is going to run on a different port, 3000. And uh, uh, let me uh, show you what uh, I had to change, you have to make. Basically, I have added a router called test.json.p in the Node.js server. And here you can see the response is going to be just JSON P and it's going to give it an object. So this is all you really need to do in the Node.js server side. And this is what you need to do on the client side. So let's see if this all works. So if I go back in here, if I uh, click on this, it's all good. Click on the button and you can see the response came back and uh, it's all good. Uh, so the interesting part is the network request and let's look at the network request. So if you look at, look at the network request, the URL is basically what I showed you. It's going to be the JSON P callback. And here you can see the client browser or jQuery has added this uh, funny looking uh, callback uh, unique function that would be wrapped up by the server response. So if you look at the uh, full server response, basically it says type of jQuery, this, this is a function then it's going to call this function and wrap your object into it. And uh, as you can see, this is all working fine. And here is a JSON P request uh, coming in from node at a different. So if you want to use JSON P as very powerful for a cross domain request to be able to get over the restrictions. And I would encourage you to use JSON P with cooperating servers in your project. If you want to learn more, you can just go to my website, Gaur Associates and type node.js and you can find this video and other videos. Thank you for taking the time today to watch this short screencast.